from the editors of Relish.com, we bring you Movable Feast with host Alex Thomopoulos. Welcome to Agonquit, Maine, a truly natural wonder. Now, Agonquit literally means beautiful place by the sea, and I couldn't agree more. Two chefs who are lucky enough to call this seaside community home are James Beard Award winners, Chef Mark Geyer. I've never had clams this style, so I'm really excited to I, try it. I think you're gonna and like it. And it smells already, even before you start cooking. Aren't this smells great? It smells great? like the most delicious Chinese restaurant. And Clark Frazier. Aren't these lobsters just gorgeous? They're beautiful. They're like from Central Casting. Together, they have solidified a gunquit as a culinary destination with their restaurant, MC Perkins Cove. They'll be taking us to source some of Maine's famous cold water lobsters aboard the finest kind with longtime friend and local lobsterman, Goat Hubbard. They've also told me that Mainers take their beer very seriously. So they're taking me to Woodland Farms Brewery. It's family owned and we're gonna be able to sample and source some of the best beer in the area. This is a meal you're really gonna wanna sink your claws into. You get it? It's a lobster, Never mind. That's all happening right now on Movable Feast with Relish. Welcome to Gunquit. It's beautiful, isn't wow. it? Wow. Beautiful, a little frosty. A little cold, <laughs> yeah. but still the sun is shining. It's good for this time of year, right? It's so I mean, beautiful. So you said this was an artist community? Yeah, this, the old pictures of the cove, there were just these little Artist some of these shacks were shacks for, for artists. Some of them, you know, they moved into a fisherman's shack, paint all day and drink and all night. A very unique community here. Everybody was everybody was welcome early on. There That's really special. Of, yeah, very different from a lot of the rest different of Different from a lot of New England and certainly a lot of Maine. It was very open here. Everybody seems so welcoming and kind. I think it's very indicative of the spirit here in Ogonquit. It's a really nice feel. Ogonquit? Ogon. Indian name, it means beautiful place by the sea. How long have you guys been here? We've been here for <laughs> about 32 years. And we've been in Perkins Cove for about 16 years. And when did you open the restaurant? We opened MC Perkins Cove in 05. It's really an authentic working place. It's the real deal. There's a sincerity about Abs this town. Absolutely. <laughs> so can you talk to me about the culinary scene and how it's evolved since you've been here? It's really changed. And with the changing culinary scene, the availability of ingredients and things like that is, is changed drastically. And we started doing a, a huge garden when we first opened here because we couldn't find what we wanted. There were all these you know, fantastic fish, but maybe it wasn't handled as well as it could, so we kept saying, okay, bring it in super fresh. And now it's this, this wonderful culinary scene. So where are you guys gonna take me today? <laughs> well, you're gonna freeze. We're, oh. gonna, <laughs> we're gonna take you out on the water on a lobster boat, and that'll be beautiful. Can I can handle the it's cold a, a little bit. It's a and I think it'll be good. We're going to a brewery, we'll what? try some Maine beer, and well, it's really caught on here. I think there's close to 100, you know, craft wow. brewers in Maine. So we're gonna go meet Goat, right? We're gonna go meet Goat. Absolutely. Uh, His name's Goat. Friend of ours. His, His name's name. really Grant, but he's been called Goat's Goat way better. since he was a little kid. And yeah. Well, I'm really excited. You'll enjoy meeting him. He's <laughs> a lot of fun. How you doing, Goat? Nice How's to see you going? guys. These nice are the legends to see you. here. <laughs> so you want to learn how to lobster? I do. I've never awesome. been. I hopefully you'll eat them after we see how they caught. Oh. The way they cook them anyway. Yeah. Shall we go? Let's go. Okay. Let's fire it up. How long have you been lobstering out here? Since I was probably eight. Yeah. My parents started this business 64 years ago. Wow. And I didn't really have much of a part of it. I did. I learned everything, but I, my two older brothers kind of took the shine away. So I started working in restaurants and went to cooking school and um, worked um, the best job I could have ever had was working with these guys. And then he got smart. Yeah, we <laughs> cured him of liking restaurants. <laughs> yeah, it was either That's like amazing. open a pastry shop or a bakery or my dad said, why don't you come back and work on the boats? So I did. Where are you taking us to get these We're lobsters? We're gonna go uh, right along the shore where it's, we set the traps in April or May. 
They stay in the water all summer. How many lobsters do you uh, pull out a year? I don't keep track. I mean, we only do it in conjunction with, you know, the boat tours. Uh -huh. So we only have like 40 traps. Oh, okay. I mean, guys that do it commercially will have hundreds of traps. Yeah. So Mark and Clark, can you talk to me the difference between these cold water main lobsters and say like a warm water lobster I would get back home in California? <laughs> Flavors being so named. different. It's a completely different genus, right? Yeah, the lobsters that we catch in Maine are Homeris americanus, or American lobster, <laughs> which only exists in America. Um, it does exist in Canada to a great deal, but it's pretty much from Cape Hatteras, North Carolina to Labrador. But Maine is really legendary for lobster, it always has been. Yeah. Um, and we catch about anywhere from 80 to 90% of the U.S. supply. Lobsters from Maine, it's a cold, cold water and it has a wonderful brininess, but I think for chefs, it's, it's very smooth, the delicate flesh. The great thing about working with lobster, working right here with it, is that, that the fishery is so sustainable. We first started you know, making the traps. You have to do this, you have to throw th certain ones back. We really try to stay away from things that aren't sustainable. Let's haul one. One of the reasons that we have so many lobsters over the years is that we have strict rules regarding the size of a lobster. They don't reach sexual maturity until they're that size. And by that, I mean the carapace measurement, which is the top of the shell. See, that one's a little bit too short. It has to be that full size, three and a quarter inches. Got it. <laughs> what that does is that allows a lobster, if it's going to produce eggs, to show us. By proving that she's a breeder, we now have the ability to cut a V-notch in her tail fin. And every time she's caught, she's got to go back. It's basically like singling out all the mother lobsters. Now we all know, don't keep that lobster. Let her produce. What do you think you're going to do for the feast? We're actually going to do a lobster salad. I like to use a lot of fresh herbs with it and greens. Mm. We get some, like, frise and things like that. And I really love lobster grilled. I think yeah. I want to do, like, a Southeast Asian kind of spin on a grilled lobster. That, that sounds, sounds fantastic. Yeah. So, uh, goat, I think we're going to take a couple of these lobsters for our feast. We need, like, eight. Yeah, only oh, more. Ten? Oh, Whoa. yeah. Oh, OK. Only one. <laughs> we need, like, ten. And then, Mark and Clark, you're going to take me to a brewery, correct? Yeah, we are. Right down the road. You ready for a drink? Good. I need a I'm beer. I'm I bet freezing. You do. All right, folks, doesn't get any fresher than this. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. What kind of beer are we drinking? This is our Blinky, New England IPA. To New England. To New England. Blinky. Cheers. Wow. That's really nice. You have this assumption that an IPA is going to be really bitter. This is very smooth, very, a little very. fruity, but not. No, there's no sweetness to it. That's right. The hallmark of the New England IPA style is the removal of the bitterness. We don't actually add hops during the boil really at all. We only do it at the very, very end of the process so that we get the aromas and the sweetness and the, and the delicious floral fragrances from the hops without the bitterness. Really thick profile too, you know, long lines, lacy. We've got six beers uh, waiting for us out in the tasting room. Why don't we go and have some? All right, sounds good. Cheers. That's Cheers. Great. After this tasting, I don't know if this feast is going to happen, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been brewing beer and what kinds of beer? I've been brewing beer for about 20 years, commercially for four. We don't pigeonhole ourselves into a particular style. So in China, they cook a lot with beer, dark beer. You have some good dark beers, right? I sure do. It'd be really fun. Maybe we could use one uh, today to cook with. So we've just released a beer uh, called Black is Beautiful. It's a beer that is brewed nationwide in support of racial equality. 
Okay. We're donating all of the proceeds awesome. back to That's the Maine wonderful. People's Alliance. Wow. And it is a Russian Imperial Stout, so it is black and beautiful. That is absolutely wonderful. That sounds great. Wow. So, yeah. Weathered Souls Brewery was the brewery that started this movement, and I believe they're up to over 126 breweries across the country. Wow. Are brewing this beer and donating the proceeds back. For every brewery has the capability to put their own spin on this beer. Sure. So we added some oats. We made it a little bit stronger. Um, it is rich and roasty Coffee's and just yeah. absolutely delicious. Cheers. Cheers. This yeah, is this caramely is... and mm. has notes of coffee in it. Absolutely. This will be great to cook with. It sure will. You guys want to try something really cool? Yeah. Okay, so uh, when I first opened this place, the first beers that we brewed went directly into oak barrels. We aged it for four years. Four years? Four years, yeah, and then we blended it back. So this is the first beer, these are the first beers that we've ever brewed. We sat them on individual fruits for about six months at, uh, during the brewing process. So we've got a blood orange version, a peach version, and an Oud Creek, which is a Belgian style. So do you have a favorite? Oh, the blood orange. Blood orange. I want to share that with yeah. you guys. Yeah. It, and these are not necessarily for the faint of heart. This is as sour as sour gets. Salud. 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 Oh, I like oh, this. Yeah. Wow, huh? Boy, Alex, what do you think of this with a dessert? Ooh, that would be amazing. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. Maybe uh, something with blueberries? That's a great I idea. Mean, I love that when idea. When in Maine. Yeah, when in Maine, drink Maine beer. <laughs> Eat Maine blueberries. Yeah. Are you joining us for our feast later? I would absolutely love to. Awesome. I hope you bring some of this beer. I certainly will. OK, certainly awesome. Will. Thank you so much for having us. Mark and Clark, thank you so much for having us. Yeah, it's our pleasure. Oh. Yeah, great to have you here. What are we going to make today? We're going to take the lobsters that we got from goat and we boiled them actually for about 12 minutes already. And we're gonna make a very simple lobster salad, just some mayonnaise and then a tarragon vinaigrette. Yeah. And it's kind of a first course hey. to start, start slow and go easy. <laughs> All right. You better get to work. Yeah, okay. exactly. Our okay, guests I'll are almost my... here, so let's, uh, let's get cooking. So we have uh, these lobsters just they're just beautiful. They're like from Central Casting or wow. something, right? It's a simple salad, but we want to make the presentation really nice. This is a great time of the year to be eating lobster. Do you guys serve a lot of lobster at your restaurant? Oh, we serve a lot at MC. A lot, a lot. Yeah. I mean, you know, when in Rome, everybody comes from around the world to have lobster in Maine. You got to give and the people what you, they want. Exactly. And we love it, too. Pull this beautiful Oh, that's out. gorgeous. We'll set those aside and clean them up, and that's going to be our plate, essentially, for the Beautiful. salad. So kind of a little old French style. Well, that was kind of your training, right? You studied under Jeremiah Tower. Yeah, exactly. Kind of the maverick uh, brought back a lot of ideas from France and the Mediterranean and so on. Kind of changed the way America cooks. Or at least does restaurants. Open kitchens, come as you are, use seasonal vegetables, and be cooking from where you are. You know, right. Maine, a few miles away, went on the ocean. So that's what we should be cooking with. Okay, so shall we make some mayonnaise? Yeah. I feel like this is always the building block of making mayonnaise, is making sure you have enough egg yolks. Mm -hmm. And give this a little stir. You know, with a lot of cooking, it's all about just the timing and the love you give to it. You know what I mean? Like, you're not, you can't. You can't rush things when you cook. Like when you're doing a dinner for friends, you try to do it in a half hour. No. Your you friends are not going to be impressed. No. You know. Good cooking takes time and some patience and a lot of love. Yeah, and a lot of love. It's true. Well, looks pretty good. Right. Right. <laughs> and those egg yolks make it so rich. Exactly. Yeah. There we go. Oh, that's beautiful. I think we've got the great. This great. is such a simple and elegant execution. Of this dish. I mean, how it's really pretty easy, too. Yeah. Really yeah. celebrating the ingredients. Yeah. It's so, uh, well, well, I guess we should start on the uh, vinaigrette. So, a little Dijon mustard. Mark always insists on using shallots. I love but, shallots yeah. in my vinaigrette. It's beautiful tarragon, and I don't think you can ever have too much tarragon. And parsley gives another flavor, but the other nice thing about the parsley is it keeps it green. Mm -hmm. Do you guys share a lot of recipes? Do you guys 
pull from childhood memories. Yeah. And Very different. You know, California kid, Buckeye. Yeah, yeah. different. <laughs> Start it off low, low and slow, right? Yeah, that's right. There we go. And voila. That's oh. done. It's going to be a great salad, amazing. I hope. Sounds yeah. like a refreshing yeah. way to Sounds start good, the feast. Yeah. yeah. Well, you guys seem like you're in great shape. I think we are. Okay, Definitely. great. I'm going to get started on my grilled lobster. And do you guys want to go set the table? We'll get the table Sounds ready. like a good yeah. idea. Yeah. Sounds yeah. like a plan. Yeah. Let's All do right. it. All right. For the feast today, I'm making a grilled lobster, and I'm gonna make a compound butter to baste it with. But instead of just using plain butter, I wanna infuse it with a little bit of Southeast Asian flair. To the butter, I'm gonna add some classic Thai flavors. So I've got some shallots, some beautiful Thai bird chilies. I like a little heat, so I'm gonna add three. The lobster here in Maine is so sweet and succulent. I really wanted to infuse it with those big, bright, and bold flavors. I'm gonna grate a bunch of ginger. Instead of just using regular kosher salt, I'm using fish sauce. Now, most people are afraid of using fish sauce, but really, it is one of the staple ingredients that I have in my kitchen. It gives such a beautiful umami flavor to everything that you use it in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my split lobsters and I'm gonna brush a little bit of this butter over them and I'm gonna start to grill them. And as they grill, I'm gonna turn them over and I'm gonna just keep basting it with this beautiful butter. As these aromatics hit that heat, they're just gonna release all their beautiful flavor into that sweet, succulent lobster meat. And then a little trick I like to do for a garnish is I take scallions and I slice them really thin into ribbons. And I'll let them hang out in some ice water. And over time, what happens is they start to curl up and it just gives you this really beautiful, delicate garnish on top. And that's it. It's super simple, but a ton of flavor. So we should get cooking because our guests are arriving soon. And I don't want them to wait. So how do we get this dish started? Well, I'm so excited about this dish. My favorite's a steamed clam dish. The first time I had anything like this was the first time Clark took me to China. We're mixing together all these different things to make a stock, and we're gonna use some prosciutto and ginger and garlic scallions, Chinese black beans, all these flavors of China. It's great. <laughs> okay, so how do we get the clam started? Well, we have some chicken stock here, and what we're gonna do is add some dark beer to that. Yep. Unseasoned and rice wine vinegar. Some Shaoxing wine. And then some soy. So there, our stock is pretty much ready. So the important thing now is to cook all the, like the prosciutto and the ginger and garlic. So we're gonna just start sauteing all these great things Ooh. that were lovingly chopped. So we're gonna add some oh, Chinese chili so paste. Good. You know, and you don't wanna put a ton of it in to start because you can't take it away. Right. If you have too much in there, it's gonna blow your head off. Or add prosciutto. And I mean, pork and clams use... go so well don't together. They? So now we're gonna throw in the clams. This is the fun part. So we're gonna add the stock that has the rice wine vinegar, the black exactly. and beautiful beer. Yep. And how long do these take to open up? They take like maybe five, six minutes. If you really are in a hurry, they'll take longer, of course. Of course. You know, they'll never open. <laughs> oh my God, it smells. I wish you could smell this at home. It's unbelievable. How did you fall in love with cooking? First, I fell in love with him, but oh, <laughs> no, sweet. actually, I fell in love with cooking way before I met him. But I think I tried to help my mom because you know she was always trying to cook for seven kids on one of seven. Mm -hmm. Clark, I think you know, fell in love with cooking for a very different reason. Yeah, a spoiled only child. I'm the polar opposite, but I had two parents who loved to cook. Okay, now this would not be done in China because they're not going to use butter in this. 
but it brings the sauce all together. Right. You know, it kind of pulls together the vinegar and the salt. And that butter just, will yeah. make it nice and velvety, a little creamy. But it'll be a great balance on the plate because this Absolutely. is a little bit earthier. Yep. And yep. The, But the clams are really bright and briny, and that lobster's going to be sweet, and then it's going to have this like acidic, mm. nice quality to it. And I think this feast is coming together beautifully. I think it is, too. So we're just going to ladle some of the sauce oh, over here. yes. And this is yes, so, yes, so good. Yes. It's a great winter dish, and actually it's kind of chilly right now. So I think this will be perfect. And then I'm just going to put some scallions. Look at that stunner Isn't that of a pretty? dish. To finish it, you got to have some cilantro. Oh, absolutely. Clark, you're good? I am. Great. So we're going to get everything plated, and it's time to feast. Them. Tell me that. It's a good evening, just... everybody. Hi. Hello. How are you? Hi. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us for tonight's feast at the beautiful home of Mark and Clark. We really wanted to create a meal tonight that celebrates the ingredients that all of you have dedicated your lives to. So without further ado, Clark, will you share the first course that you created? Yes. So to really honor the ingredients that the sea provided for us, we uh, lobster salad with a little bit of mayonnaise and uh, frisee with tarragon vinaigrette and a few other little goodies. Amazing. Yum. We hope you enjoy. Hope you enjoy. Yeah. I don't think so. It had to have been cooked earlier. Very tasty. <laughs> Pear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Mm. You have to just run mm -hmm. around and pick them up. Yeah, That's they're great. great. Hold it Any great meal requires collaboration, not only from the chefs, but the people that provided the ingredients. So we wanted to create a main course featuring Patrick, your beer, and goat, your lobster. So I did a Thai-style grilled lobster with a kimchi and scallion slaw. And I did these Chinese-inspired clams with uh, Chinese black beans, fermented black beans, Shaoxing wine, some wonderful dark beer, ginger, garlic, cilantro, tomatoes, kitchen sink. All right, well, wonderful. we hope you enjoy. Thank enjoy. you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you guys. Well, you, <laughs> right, I always right. have that. I can't take that, that out. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh my gosh, the flavor. It's so good. Yeah. It's nice with the clams. I mean, like, mm. that broth. Some, something about oh, the broth. Mm, the broth is amazing. Feel really about sour beer. <laughs> <laughs> Allow me to blow your mind. Oh, I can't wait. Sweet. I mean, the last How did you like everything? Oh it was God. amazing. Mark and Clark, what did you make for dessert tonight? Something very main. Blueberry tart, vanilla ice cream. Uh, to pair with something as wonderful and main as blueberry, I chose a four-year-old Belgian lambic that we've had aging in oak barrels and then sat on blood oranges. Wow. Ooh. Because I think the citrus will pair so well with blueberry. And before we serve dessert, I just wanted to say thank you to Mark and Clark for showing us around Agonquit, Maine, for opening up your home, to Goat, to Patrick, for all the beautiful ingredients. And who knows, maybe next time we'll be feasting in your backyard. Yeah. Salud, everybody. Salud. Thank you. Salud. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm not going to. Cheers. <laughs>